Good afternoon and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. Got a quick bulletin for you today in regards to Starliner. Not going to talk a whole lot about this because, frankly, I've said it all and so has everybody else. Can't believe that this project is still in process. Can't believe that after over three years of delays since 2019, since I started my channel, we are still hung up with this thing. And now, at least according to Boeing and people involved with the project, there were more problems that were discovered before Memorial Day that are really, really significant. It's very difficult to believe that things this wrong, flaws this significant, could possibly exist this long after the last unmanned flight test. It doesn't seem remotely feasible that these kinds of flaws could have gone unnoticed after all of these years of testing, all of these years of delays, all of these years of Boeing assuring us that they were within a hair's breadth of sending human beings to the ISS and giving us the redundancy that we need with the commercial crew program. And now we're not anywhere near. And this is because Boeing has discovered flaws with the ship's parachute system and a fire hazard that exists throughout almost the entire ship. Let me say that again. A flaw with the parachute system and a fire hazard that exists throughout almost the entire ship. Mains are now out. We see three parachutes coming out here. Starliner has another 8,000 feet toward the landing. Those three parachutes are starting to inflate now. You can see them right there on your screen. Assuming that rational thought prevails at NASA, this will be the last time that a crewed mission on the troubled Starliner capsule gets canceled. That is to say, hopefully, this cancellation will lead to the cancellation of the entire program. Although this seems to be a tremendous shame, given the fact that NASA has invested billions of dollars in this commercial crew solution from Boeing, at this point, we really need to conclude that this thing is never going to be safe. After receiving a number of warnings from consultants in regards to proceeding with a planned launch this July, NASA announced that they were confident enough in the ship to proceed with a crewed launch of Starliner in July anyway. And this, of course, produced lots and lots of negative reactions on social media. I made comparisons with the Challenger disaster, given all of the pressure that NASA currently has to come out with some sort of redundancy for Crew Dragon. Even though this capsule has been so successful up to this point, we need to assume that something might go wrong with it eventually. Keep in mind that it took quite a few launches of the shuttle before the Challenger disaster happened. Anything could happen with Crew Dragon, and we absolutely need redundancy. That being the case, though, it just wasn't worth the risk, at least not in my opinion. And finally, both NASA and Boeing made the decision to delay the launch yet again, although ostensibly for reasons that are difficult to believe. Apparently, two very significant problems were uncovered right before Memorial Day, according to Mark Nappy, Vice President and Program Manager for Starliner, or so he reported during a teleconference call with reporters. So what problems did Boeing uncover just a few weeks before Starliner? Starliner was scheduled to take human beings up to the ISS. Well, first of all, there were problems with the parachutes, something involving soft links in the lines that run from the Starliner capsule to its parachutes. Now, as long as all three parachutes deploy, as you can see here, there are no significant problems. However, it was determined that if one of these parachutes were to fail and the capsule had to rely on the remaining two, the lower load limit involved with these soft off links might cause the lines to snap and for the parachutes to fail completely. Now, this was a basic requirement in the commercial crew program to have a redundancy built into the parachute so that if one of them failed, the other two would definitely still result in a safe landing. This is something that held up Crew Dragon for a little while as they had to prove to NASA that their system was solid. And yet Boeing discovered this problem 
just a few weeks prior to taking astronauts up to the ISS. But if you think that was a serious problem, wait until you hear the next one, because it's going to take a long time to resolve this issue. Three, two, and lift off. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. Throughout the Starliner vessel, there is a glass cloth tape called P213 that's wrapped around the wiring harnesses throughout the entire vehicle. These cables run absolutely everywhere. There are hundreds of feet of these wiring harnesses. The tape is designed to protect the wiring from nicks and cuts. However, during recent tests, it was discovered that under certain circumstances possible in flight, the tape is flammable. So we have a fire hazard throughout the entire ship. Now, it hasn't been revealed to us as to what exact circumstances might happen in flight, but any fire hazard in space is completely unacceptable. And the fact that Boeing has been unable to detect these significant flaws this long after the first test of the vehicle in 2019 it's just difficult to comprehend. And if these problems still exist, what other technical hazards might still be waiting for discovery? It's little surprise that Patricia Sanders, chair of a committee overseeing the safety of this vehicle, said the following, quote, given the number of remaining challenges to certification of Starliner, we strongly encourage NASA to step back and take a measured look at the remaining body of work with respect to flying CFT. It is a strange coincidence that Boeing would uncover these very significant issues after she made this statement. It seems far more likely to me that these problems existed before Patricia said these things and she was the one who brought them to light. Perhaps not very publicly, which is why she was so vague in her statements, but Boeing was willing to accept the risks, at least at first, given their prior behavior behavior when it comes to their other vehicles, especially their aircraft, I would not be the least bit surprised if Boeing was intended to take a chance with the parachutes and take a chance with this fire hazard until Patricia Sanders made these statements and probably privately threatened to go public with the rest of these problems. That being the case then, I think it's very likely that Boeing is going to behave in a similar fashion if any other problems are discovered. And why would they do this? Because they're already $900 million in the red on this project. Since this is a fixed cost contract, Boeing is not getting any more money out of NASA. And I can scarcely imagine how much money it's going to take to replace all of that P213 cloth tape that's throughout the entire vehicle around these wiring harnesses that's going to be a significant expense by itself, driving Boeing even further into the red. And the more money they lose, the more unsafe this vehicle will become. It's time to pull the plug. I'm surprised NASA hasn't done it already. Hopefully it will happen soon. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.